In today's episode of Gen X Vault, we are going to have a new segment that we call Show and Tell. And Rob's recommendations on what to watch based on what I watched last month. And of course, we're going to open the box O mystery. And ask the Magic 8 Ball pressing questions. Here it is. Enjoy. Enjoy. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is the Gen X Vault. I am Chris Mitchell. Rob Kennedy. And we are here for your second episode. Second episode. Thank you guys for watching it right now. We certainly do appreciate it. Yes. And I want to go ahead and thank you guys. Thank you, Tracy Estes, who bought a mug and a t-shirt. Your mug is going out. It's already gone out uh, Saturday, and your t-shirt is going out this week, so thank yes. you so much. And I really like this mug. I uh, usually don't drink out of tumblers like this, but this one is just the right size. It's not huge. And I want to point out that... I'm missing the top already. Uh, it's not Melinda's fault. It is Abby, my daughter. She had she took it because she had a cup with the same opening, and she had lost hers, so she she, she took is mine. The top thief. He was he yes. predicted that last episode. He and said, I was right. That's right. Yes. You, you predicted that. He didn't even have to ask the Magic Eight Ball for that. Yes. I don't yes. think. And I'm very glad to be here for the second episode because I honestly, based on my dating life in high school. I really thought Chris was going to call me and was like, you know, Rob, I had a good time on that first episode, but I just don't think it's going to work, man. I found somebody else. Yes, man. and also, I'm, <laughs> I'm very glad to be here. We're, glad, we're both yes. glad to be here. So thank you guys for watching. Yes, thank you. All right, today we have a special segment. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to talk a lot about uh, Rob's recommendations. Yes. We have That's going to be the main Movie theme of today's show. Movie and TV show. recommendations. That's right. So you need something to watch. Here's something that I think you might like. And it's based off what I watched last month. Just in August. Yes, just, just in August. August. So the first section is... Rob's recommendations based on what he watched last month. First up, um, from what I watched last uh, month, I would recommend very highly, um, if you have Disney Plus, or if you've got the money to go to the show itself, Hamilton. Of course, they can't go to the show right now. It's not playing right now? No. Well, then you can't. COVID. Oh, yeah, that's COVID. right. I forget about COVID. Historically, we're going to watch back on this. And we're like, what's COVID, yeah. Daddy? Oh, what? Yes, Hamilton. Watch, caught, caught it on Disney Plus. Uh, excellent. It's, it's everything I was told it would be. It is good. Yeah. I did. Very I liked good. it. I liked it a lot. We talked about earlier that the only thing we were talking about Hamilton in school was that he created the banks. And, and he uh, was shot by Aaron Burr in Aaron a duel. Burr in a duel. And that got our attention because when you were when you're a kid, a boy, a, ki- a duel. Was it is pretty cool. Yes. Kind of a cool thing. Yeah. You don't think about the part where you actually get shot and die. Not the fun but part. The, but the duel was the duel. cool. Yes. And uh um, next up, a movie I watched on HBO Max that I really didn't think I would like. Uh, it's not a movie I would have sought out, but the fact that it was on HBO Max. And HBO Max does a thing where they tell you what's leaving soon. And this movie was. leaving soon? Yeah. Okay. So I, I kind of thought, well, let me go ahead and watch this. Uh, Cabaret, 1972, starring Liza Minnelli. Um, didn't know much about Liza Minnelli other than uh, Chris just re- reminded me she was Judy Garland's daughter. She's Judy Garland's daughter. Um, good movie. Really good movie, um, uh, and I was very impressed with Liza Minnelli herself. Great actress, uh, did really good with the singing, and um, it's a good movie. You should check it out. And he told me earlier that I, I always thought, I, I still haven't seen Cabaret, I always thought it was a musical, but he said, no, there's just a lot of music in it. It's a lot of musical. Yeah, she's a vaudeville. She's part of a vaudeville, kind of a vaudeville troupe, I Vaudeville guess. troupe, something like that. And uh, But it's set in Germany uh, before the uh, Nazis really took over, but it does that does play into it, but it's... Um, it's a good movie. So Cabaret. Good, good grown up, grown up movie. Yes, Cabaret. Cabaret. Um, last month I finished up watching the excellent Agents of Shield. They had their final season, final episode. I thought it ended great. Um, if you got the time for a smart uh, comic book uh, show with a little bit of espionage and that type of thing in it, strongly recommend you start Agents of Shield. And it's good. It does have Agent Coulson in it. It does have Agent Coulson in it. He is he is the director. Is, is he one of the main guys? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Agent Coulson is in that from the yes. Avengers movies. From the Avengers. The same Coulson, yes. There you go. Agents of Shield, very good if you got the patience. 
Um, next up, if you're in another mood for a grown up movie and you haven't and you have not had a hard week, um, because uh, this is a hopeful movie, but it's also a gut punch movie, and that is uh, 1998's Life Is Beautiful, uh, starring Robert Benigni. I, th- I hope I'm saying that right. He's an Italian actor and director. He wrote it, acted in it, and directed it. Okay. Um, but it is a movie about the um, uh, atrocity about the Nazis and concentration camps. Um, but it, it is it it's a very hopeful movie. But um, like most movies of that era, it of that uh, that cover that era, it's um, it can be rough in a, in a few Man. places. But it is a good. It is a great movie. That our point in life, we have to get to that point where we go. Oh man, I, I've got to get in the mindset to watch yep. a World War II movie you do. or something like that, yep. you know, or or something like. Well, I remember the the weekend we were in, you know, Twelve Years a Slave. It's God, it's watching yeah. a movie like that is yeah. tough. So, because but like I said, if you are, uh, life is beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a different take on the whole um, uh, era, but it's um, it is good, really good. Uh, I know Chris is gonna love this one. Um, Nineteen ninety four, The Shawshank Redemption. Watched it last month. Best movie ever. Oh, it is great. And, um, yeah, that, that, you know why I like that movie? Can I jump in? Sure. That movie watches like a book reads. Yeah. There's foreshadowing. My, one of my favorite scenes, and I never forget when I figured this out the whole time, you know, uh, Morgan Freeman's character says, oh, you just having pipe dreams, yeah. Andy. I went ahead and blew myself yeah. out on that one. Yeah, yeah, but when yeah. he says that, what does he get out of the pipe <laughs> that was used for? Yep. Mm-hmm. That's that, right. And I think the scene that gets me every time when I watch Shawshank is, um, when he puts on the opera record. Oh, yeah, yeah. And and when Morgan Freeman says, I don't know what that lady was saying. That's right. But, you know, every guy in there was, was crying. Free. Oh, that's it. And all that. I think but, it was yeah. The Marriage of Figaro. I think it was yeah. Mozart. Marriage, yeah, Marriage well, of Figaro. yeah, that's yeah. how that tracks that. And, all and that. it was just, the way the, their harmonies in that scene, because um, I, I sang opera some in college yeah. and uh, was not, do not consider myself an opera singer, but I had to sing it as a music major. And so, but I never had to sing anything from Marriage of Figaro. Yep. And, um, but when those two sopranos, he, he mm-hmm. describes them as like little birds, I yeah. think. And they really do, man. They go, oh, it sounds yeah. amazing in that scene. So, so yeah. if you've, if you've never seen Shawshank Redemption, uh, something's wrong with you. Go watch it. Go watch Shawshank um, Redemption. Yeah. Like I said, it is one of the best movies ever made. It's That's great. Right. It's awesome. Um, okay. So for some, to kind of pick things back up, if you're looking for something fun to watch and you're a fan of Westerns and really kind of it, if you're not, um, 1985 Silverado. Great Western, fun, uh, never takes itself too seriously. Um, has all this was uh, Lawrence Kasdan wrote it. He and his brother okay wrote it, and Lawrence Kasdan directed it. And it was kind of his love letter to um, spaghetti westerns. Uh, not really spaghetti westerns so much, just westerns in general. Okay, um, it hits all the beats that you expect to find in a western, but it's got a great cast: Kevin Klein. Um, uh, Kevin Costner, Brian Dennehy. Remember Brian Dennehy? Oh, he was my, one of my favorite actors, yeah, actually. Brian Dennehy. In Rambo, awesome, in the original yeah. Rambo. He's one of my favorite and, uh, actors. So they, First it's, blood. A, it's a really good movie. And one quick little tidbit about Silverado, a little factoid. Remember back when movies, you could get them in full screen or widescreen? Yes. And, uh, and that was, uh, you know, that was you had to make sure you got and I was dumb the enough, widescreen. I was dumb enough not to. Yeah. I was like, oh, I want to fill the whole screen up. Yeah, back exactly. then. Yeah, I don't yeah. want them bars. Or, I don't but here's the key. Here's the. I don't know if Kazan did this on purpose. I kind of think he did. I like. I like to think he did. You know, it, I'm. I, this is a spoiler. But in the final, sort of, in the final uh, showdown, the duel we the just duel. talked about. <laughs> the duel. Yeah. It was a duel. The duel at the end between Brian Dennehy and Kevin Klein. Um, there are certain aspects of that that if you're watching it full screen, you can't see either one of them. Oh yeah. You hear a gunshot and you hear somebody fall. All you see is a dusty street. If you're watching it full that's, screen, that's also well done too. Yes, yeah, it's also a, yeah. you didn't get the you didn't get yeah. it. Yeah, because on right. the widescreen when you look at it, they're they're literally on the edge of the screen, both right. of them. So if it's full screen, you're not seeing out. it. You're not seeing it. Okay, so uh, Silverado, especially if you like westerns, good movie. Um, Blast from the past. Hadn't watched it in years. Uh, oh, uh, we were all sitting around one night, decided to put it on because I had just gotten the Blu-ray uh, version. I bought the steel book at Walmart for like. 10 bucks or something this this one here yep Ghostbusters 1984 can't beat that and uh, sorry Bobby Brown but um, what's his name Ray 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 Park Jr Ray Park Jr has got to beat because you can't beat oh no you uh, can't beat the Ghostbusters there are there are people out there I, I one of the podcasts I listen to is called the Purple Stuff Podcast and the guy Dinosaur Dracula Matt and uh, Jay 
they were talking about how he he actually put the second song better, but it's nowhere near it. Yeah. So if you ever watch this uh, episode, it is nowhere near the original Ghostbusters Ghostbusters yeah. theme song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't beat Ghostbusters. Can't Ghost, beat it. And Ghostbusters, it still holds up. It I does. Mean, it still, yeah. I mean, yeah. You can, and honestly, the effects still they hold up pretty, pretty good. good. I pretty mean, good. it's it's yeah. obvious in yeah. some places, but. Uh, they did good work on that movie. Well, they, really that's did. a, yeah, and we haven't obviously we haven't seen the new one that's coming out, but yeah. it is supposed to be the actual spiritual sequel right. to yep. the original. So yep. we'll see how not, that goes. Not a reboot in we'll the same universe. Goes. Yes. Um, here's a movie that um, I rewatched. I, I tried watching it years ago, and I, I I wasn't in the right frame of mind, and I couldn't even get through it. But I watched it again uh, as a more mature uh, film goer, and I get I got it this time. I really okay. enjoyed it. And the movie, and if you're a Star Wars, if you're a diehard Star Wars fan, you need to go watch this movie just for reference. And it's 1956. Well, it came out in the U.S. in 1956. It came out in Japan in 1954. Wow, it's that old. It's Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. All right. And this movie, uh, a bunch of you, if you're a Western fan, you've seen the American version of this called The Magnificent Seven. Oh, okay. Yes. That's what that is. Yeah, okay. it's a remake of Seven Oh, Samurai. I didn't know that. Well, now, you, remember that one time I had you over the house? We just kind mm. of became friends, and I had you at my apartment. And I said, hey, man, I got this. I had just gotten back from ILM. Oh, no, I know what you're going to bring ILM. Yeah. You, know, you remember this? And I said, hey, here's a... What was a life in four... I don't remember. I don't remember the name of it. I've got it. That was a weird movie. Well, that's what you said, but now you might be yeah. mature enough to watch it. I might be, I might be mature enough Now you might be like, oh, the camera angles and the color in that film were just unbelievable. But now was the guy in the diaper that I had a problem with. That was just weird. <laughs> I don't remember. That was a uh, but, but Seven Seven Samurai. And if you go back and watch it, you can. This is one of George Lucas's favorite films. Okay, Kurosawa is his favorite director. That's right. And there are influences there. You watch Seven Samurai, you will see the inspiration for Obi Wan Kenobi. Right. You will see a little bit of the template for Luke Skywalker. Okay. Um, I didn't know it. I I didn't think about it while I was watching it, but um. Seven Samurai was one of the first movies to have wipes and transitions. Really? Uh, from scene to scene. And that was 50... Yeah, uh, 54. 54. Wow. Yes. And if you're really eagle-eyed, if you remember back in the prequels, every now and then Yoda would rub his head kind of like this. Okay. Straight from Seven Samurai. Really? Yeah. The huh. direct homage to uh, Oh, yeah, that's Seven right. Samurai. He did that in the prequels. In the prequels. Yeah. yeah not the yeah. puppet Yoda. No, not the, the puppet Yoda. Yoda. Okay. Uh, and then uh, several months ago... Uh, I didn't want to watch this series. My son, he loves this series. And he talked me into, we made some kind of agreement and I agreed to watch it with him. And, and I, I went into it grumbling like, rah, 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 rah. Avatar The Last Airbender. Okay. The Nickelodeon car- That's animated cartoon, show. Right? Yeah, it's yep. cartoon. Okay. Um, it's really good. Okay. You know, I'm, I may not ever watch it again, but I'm glad I let him talk me into watching it. It's a, it's a solid show. Solid show? And you don't have to be, um, I mean, like my dad would never like it. But I think if you, I think you would probably get into it if you watch it. But my son loves it. Okay. And but it's a it's a solid show. Uh, if you're into animated series and um, it's got good humor, good action. I think pitching the fields a, a few times. I think I saw the the actual movie, the Avatar. Oh no, I've heard he JT hates that. Okay, it's but awful. it's the same premise, right? You got a guy who can do. Yeah. He can yep. basically control elements. Yep. Okay. He can control the four elements. Okay. But, um, and it's, it's really not that long. It's, it's three seasons, about um, 15 or 16 episodes. But you give this. I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. All right. Thumbs uh, up. Like I said, may not get, it probably, I probably won't ever watch it again, but I'm, I'm glad I watched it. All right. And I enjoy watching it with him. That's good. And I, you know, that's good. Well, that's cool that you he, he, did, he would do, he'd stop every now and then. Now, this is this and explain it to me because my son is like pop culture. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, historian. You, it's cool. And it's cool that you guys can share that. You yeah. Because, yeah. you know, that, I like that. God, what if he was. What if he's totally opposite than you? Yeah. And, you know, he's like, what? He's just yeah, not. Exactly. That's what yeah, it would be bad. Um, and then I, I promised Abby, my daughter, that I would mention this movie. Because we about two or three times a month, we have family movie night. Okay. And sometimes we pick good movies. Sometimes we pick. But each person gets to pick okay. a movie in our family. And so Abby subjected us to The Kissing Booth 2. Does, have you ever That's seen the first one? one? Yes, I've seen the first okay. one. Okay. Because right. she did that in the month Because the sequel would... Kissing Booth 2. So, Abby, I'm fulfilling my obligation to you. I said I would mention The Kissing Booth 2. I did. Uh, the Kissing Booth movies are made by Netflix, I think. But okay. they're kind of like, imagine if Nickelodeon made the 80s team remade, made like, a movie in the vein of the 80s 
teen movies we grew up with. Like 16 Candles and Breakfast Something like that. Yeah, okay. it's that little more, little more hard PG-13 okay. than that. Okay. Um, well, there were some scenes in 16 Candles that were yeah. like, you know, hey. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Yeah. She liked it. She loves it. J- JT won't admit it, but I'm outing him right here. He he liked it more than he would admit. I didn't. Um, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's the thumbs down. Yeah, and also. But um, and then uh, that's that's my movies and TV shows I think you might like. Uh, if you're looking for a comedy special, uh, we've checked out Jim Jeffers and Tolerant. He's an Australian comedian. Well, whole family watched it. We all laughed. It's not a comedy show for little kids. It's yeah, you ain't gonna be an adult, or at least think you are. Um, Joe Coy, he's a funny comedian. We watched his live in Seattle show. Uh, he's funny. Uh, um, make we laughed um, several times, and uh, that's about it. Just some things. If you you're looking for something to watch, I would recommend those things. Um, if you got HBO Max, check out Space Coast Coast to Coast. It's a blast from the '90s, but it's. It's pretty funny. Now, let me give you a little preface here, uh, a little post-preface, if I can. Post-preface. Oh, this is a post-preface. You uh, a post-preface? Ro- I, 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 we just invented that. A post-preface. Yes, that'll work. Post-preface. Uh, Rob is an... I, I consider Rob actually a movie expert because he will pick up on who directs it, who stars in it, who, what they, else they've been in, the six degrees of separation, all that kind of stuff. And he will actually uh, kind of really, really pick up on this. So if you like movies and you want to watch movies... I would recommend Rob's recommendations. Now, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, to tell a little bit more, We Rob and I shot, this is the second take we've done of this sequence. Second take. The first take, we were only like four or five movies in, and it was an hour and 49 minutes long. Yeah, we didn't know we'd been talking that long. We didn't know. But he really, really loves movies. So, in honor of your, uh, what's his name, Kar- Kurosawa? Kurosawa. In honor of his Kurosawa segment, I'm going to take us out with a wipe. All right, this is a new section that we're going to introduce. We're actually going to do this every week. This was actually Rob's idea. Yeah, based on kind of what we did last week. And what we did when we were in elementary school. Yeah, and because we want to we want to talk about a variety of topics, but we want to keep action figures at the heart of Gen X Fault because that's what, that's what is our yeah, heart. That is, that's in yeah, our heart. It's action figures that brought us together. It is. So, action figures that brought us together in the we, collection. Of we don't want to let the show get away from action figures. We don't want to stray too far. Yes. Mm. Gotcha. All right, so this next section, again, we are calling... It's time for Show and Tell, boys and girls. All right. And in the honor of uh, Rob's idea, I think uh, we're going to let you go first, Rob. Let's go ahead and bring okay. what you got here first. My first uh, uh, item for Show and Tell is a decidedly in-action figure. In-action. But, but it is recommended by my son, JT, that I should show this, and it is awesome. It is... The Diamond Select PVC statue of the Batman Who Laughs. Batman. Uh, and again, to, so the viewers that you corrected me on this, this is not the Joker. This is not the Joker. Honestly, when I bought this figure, I bought it just because I had seen on the geek sites I go to, I had seen uh, the character, the Batman Who Laughs. And I bought that statue based on nothing more than I thought this was one of the most well-designed comic book characters that I've seen in the last 10 years. And it certainly looks like uh, Tim Burton's version of Hellraiser, Batman, yep. and the Joker. It is, but I just think it's a great design. It right. is just so out there. A little bit of, I get a little bit of um, the mouth of Sauron from uh, this exact, Return yeah. of the King. In the, in the kind of the yeah, eyes thing. because it has no eyes. That's and right. That. Yeah. But honestly did not know that much about, I'm like, Chris, I thought, when I first thought, I thought it was some version of the Joker. Yeah. So uh, we had to go... To my pop culture expert, which is JT. Again. And he kind of he gave me a Cliff Notes version of how the Batman Who Laughs came to be. That is Bruce Wayne from an alternate uh, uh, universe. Of DC alternate universe. DC alternate universe. And for those of you who may not know, there's a lot of alternate universes in the comic yeah, books. Multiverse is what they call multiverse. it. Multiverse. Actually, yes. did you know that physicists consider that to be a possible truth? Now I, have, I did know that. Mm-hmm. Yes. I, I've been reading about that. And we can only well. call it hope that it is. I know that somewhere out there, yeah. there's a very smart version of me. Yes, there is the Rob who laughs somewhere out there. <laughs> the, the, Rob, that's, the Rob who smiles. That's scary. Yes. Yeah, that's scary. That's true. I have a reputation for being grumpy. Yeah. But, just prickly. Just yeah, prickly. that's true. All right, so... Quick Cliff Notes version, if you're like me and you don't know who it is but thinks it looks cool. I think it looks cool. Um, apparently on this alternate Earth, um, Joker had decided once and for all, kind of like the Dark Knight, he was going to make Batman kill. Okay. So he did this. I guess in some way he 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 captured Batman. But instead of killing him, 
He made him watch as he blew up hospitals full of people. And don't get the, the dark story you told me earlier. That's, I'm going to edit all that down. So, yeah. yeah. So, he blew hospitals up. Blew hospitals up. He killed people in front of Batman. He recreated the death of Batman's parents. Which is horrible. And just did all kind of these things. So, he finally succeeded. He, Batman... Uh, snap. Grabbed him around the neck. Snap. Joker's dead. Well, Joker booby-trapped his body. So, when he died... Uh, that Joker gas or whatever it is that Joker uses to Jokerize people infected Jokerize Batman. Joker, I like that you said. Is that your yeah. thing? Sure. Jokerize um, me. So I don't think it is though. I'll, I'll, um, I'm gonna give it to you. So, uh, so Batman, and not only did Batman eventually become insane, he knew he was becoming insane and could do nothing. He was to stop smart. It. He's super smart. Yeah. So eventually, he goes crazy. He kills Robin and his. Uh, um, Peanuts gallery of uh, friends and uh, sidekicks, and then he kills the Justice League. Oh, this horrible. And he becomes this. This. And at some point, is. they pull him over, and he, the character became so popular that they pull him over into the mainstream universe where he met our Batman. And um, holy moly! Actually, then then he got he got he got his comeuppance. And, oh. Yeah, because our Batman don't play. He didn't take that. No. Mm-hmm. He didn't take that a lot. No, not at all. And on, on, since this is your pick, I will say this. Uh, Drew, I'm sure Drew Purvis, I'm going to give you a shout out, Drew. He's our uh, our resident Batman fan at Plaid Dot, and he, I'm sure, knows all about this cat. So yes. this one's And cute. I may have gotten some facts wrong because, um, like I said, um, JT gave me the rundown, but uh, some things get lost in translation. But they that's do. the gist of how the Batman who laughs came to be. But the figure is But I awesome. think it I think the figure is just great. It's Hellraiser meets Batman yeah. meets Sauron meets yeah. the Joker. And it's still available out there on Amazon, Entertainment Earth. So if you're looking for a thing, there it is. Not a lot of action as Rob says on that figure, but it's still no. cool nonetheless. Yep. That's cool. All right. All right, time for Chris's pick. All right. For what sure you got first? Tell, oh, there's that voice I'm again. Gonna bring... No, okay. Here I we did go. that voice in the first hour and a half. Rob yeah. loved it. Yeah. I'm actually gonna bring something different. I'm All gonna right. bring uh, back in the 90s, we took photos. We put them in photo books. Yep. Had to wait to get them. You had to wait. You didn't even know if they turned out. Yeah. <laughs> Most of these didn't. Yeah. So, But I'm going to show my entire collection of 1996 Star Wars toys. And I'm going to show the graphics on the screen because you're not going to see the reflections in the book that well. Yeah. All right. And this so, is what Chris's collection consisted of in 1996. And in 1996, when they announced the Power of the Force, I yeah. thought, okay, they're only going to do 120 figures like they did back in the day. Mm-hmm. I won't have to collect a lot. I'll just get 120 and I'll be done. I did, as you said earlier, have an end game. I had an end yep. game. The end game didn't work out like I'd planned. Nope. It expanded. That's okay. Yes. So this is that. I think I'll have to show this picture. Well, not that picture. Yeah, it's kind of weird. The uh, collecting... Um, has a lot of um, similarities to uh, getting hooked on drugs. It it, it does. It, really. is, it, it does. It's it kind of a safe way. It can, it can consume you if you let it. Now, do you recognize? I, I'm going to show you this up here. I know you yes. know all that, and you got all that. Do you recognize? I know, it might be hard to see. Do you recognize what that is down there? Let me get, get a closer look. Hmm. It's very variety of figures. It's, it's the seventies, but I'm going to tell you a funny little story about that. Last week, those you are vintage showed, figures. Yes, those are vintage. But last week, where are they now? Well, that's where I'm about to tell you. Oh. All right. So last week, um, Rob, you shared your 1978 Boba Fett. Yep. And um, I had a guy, a friend in college named Brad, and he said, hey, I've got a lot of Star Wars, vintage Star Wars stuff. Are you interested? And I said, sure, I, I am interested. Mm-hmm. And he said, okay, cool. So he brought the collecting case over. And he says, well, how, I said, well, how much do you want for it? And he said, $25. Oh, wow. And I said, okay. <laughs> so I did. So about yeah, I guess I can squeeze that. that and I just realized what that yeah. was as I'm telling this to you. Yeah. So about two weeks later, his sister and I we went to college. We went to college together. We're mm-hmm. friends. And his sister goes, "Hey, uh, hey, mom found out that Brad sold all his old Star Wars stuff, and uh, can can he buy it back from you?" And I went, <laughs> <laughs> "I'm like, yeah, I never really tell you this story. Wow, no, no, okay." I said, "Yeah, he can." And I, and I, I, oh. she was super sweet. So I, I sold it all back. I said, except one. And she said, what? And I said, Boba Fett. He ain't getting that back. Because <laughs> I lost mine as a kid. Yeah. So uh, thank you, Betsy, for letting me keep the Boba Fett. She was so you married. have it? I still have it. That's what's in my cabinet. Oh, is that the cabinet up That's there? That's the okay. cabinet up there, yeah. So okay. I still have the, the Boba Fett that I bought from Brad. Thank you, Brad, for letting me allow to keep that one. And I think I um, I, I gave him all the rest of them back. So well, Brad, a- I can just say... Mama said I gotta get it back. <laughs> That's how it went. That's how it went down. There's <laughs> college kids. My mom yeah. said I gotta get this back. Yeah. I'm like, dude, I'll give you your money back, but I'm keeping that fat and I'll give you yeah. like twenty I think I gave him like 
five or ten dollars for the fat. Right. So this is worth it to me. It was, yeah. you know, I helped the guy out. I, I was in a situation so where he I got could. his figures back in, made ten bucks. But, yeah, except, <laughs> except for Boba Fett. Except for Boba Fett. Yes. All right. So All my right. first selection is my whole entire 1996 History. collection. <laughs> All right. Okay. My second item and final item for show and tell. Well, you'll see. Is this very, very plain looking uh, Darth Maul from 1999. This skirt. Yeah. And. This figure, the sculpt is not that good. There's not much detail. He's got his arm out at a weird angle, and the lightsaber doesn't. Or he's got this cheap plastic thing, and just overall, it's just a very bland figure. Nothing to that guy. Nothing to him, yeah. And uh, so I got to thinking, what can I do to make this figure cool and better? I'll so hold this one. Yeah, you got that. I decided I would take a Qui Gon Jinn figure. This is where you get sick. And. I would drill a hole through the Qui-Gon Jinn figure. And if you drill a hole through the Qui-Gon Jinn figure, you can then take this Darth Maul figure and you can push the lightsaber through Qui-Gon Jinn and recreate some of your favorite scenes from the Phantom Yes, Race. my favorite scene is when the hero yes. dies. Yes, my and, favorite scene. Uh, and Qui-Gon Jinn, and it, it, it gutted me not as much as it did Qui-Gon because Qui-Gon Jinn is my favorite Jedi. Is he? He is. I didn't know if I knew that. He's, to me, he's the quintessential Jedi. Because he just doesn't yeah. he didn't play by rules. And now this figure, well, he's what a Jedi should have been. He's, they yeah, I, I he was beholden that. to the Force, not, not to the... Not to the code. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So now this Darth Maul figure is awesome because there's some action in these action figures because he's actively killing Qui-Gon there for there is fun definitely at home. Action. And you can see the lightsaber coming through. All the way. And it, it's just, it's just great. Well, and Rob, and I will say this about Rob's collection as opposed to mine. If you ever see my collection, if you ever video of pictures of our room, um, mine is just very organized, very neat. I've, I've actually built specific cabinets for things. It's yes. kind of what I'm in my vein. And, and Rob's is got all these killer dioramas in it. And it's got he's got these, you know, he'll rob parts off of computers. He'll take this and yep. he'll, he'll take these little heat sinks and things like that and put it together. And it's yep. really cool. His, uh, your actual... Um, your your Watto's you know uh, junkyard, junkyard and yep. your uh, uh, the, the 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 my favorite scene of yours and I've said this before yep. is the cantina scene yeah I put it a lot of a lot of work into the lot cantina of work scene in that. and and if you're doing dioramas um, which he does uh, computer components are very good to fill out your diorama because they look they've alien. got that look to them and uh, they're they're very versatile um, and uh, one day, when when Chris gives me access to the Gen X vault, to my section of Gen X vault, I'll post some pictures. I'll start posting pictures of the collection, but um, I think this is still a trial run, so he's waiting to see if we're going to last before it's he gonna, It's going to last. It's going to be the timing issue. Yeah, exactly. That's what it is. So anyway, so that's my pick. Uh, how to turn a very bland, a couple of figures that aren't the greatest into something kind of cool. And terrifying and, uh, at the same yeah. time. So. <laughs> I do like that. I give Rob, every time I walk into his house, I... And I see that, I get, that just ain't right, man. Yeah. I say it every time. Yeah, and I don't have stuff all over my house. I, um, my wife actually designed, when she was doing our house plan, she actually made sure that I would have an upstairs room for section. my collection. Cause, A section. Because right. she's awesome sometimes. And Ashley did the same thing for me. Yep. She gave me free reign on the man cave, and I was appreciative of that. So thank yep. you. Yeah. All right, for my final pick today, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys uh, for my final show and tell. This is, uh, I mentioned last week, I mentioned Snow Job. He was one of my favorite G.I. Joe characters as a kid. And uh, I love the skis. My new favorite thing is when the pants go over the boots like that. Yeah. I love that. Very I love the fact that his jacket goes over. Rob and I were talking earlier. We can't figure out why he has a gas why can. Why he has a gas can, yeah. We don't know. Did he run out of gas somewhere from his snowmobile? Have yeah, because it? It, it, it doesn't make sense that he would be taking gas to somebody. Mm -mm. Because that would mean they were way ahead of him. And can he not make a fire with everything else he's got in that backpack? You would, you would think. I, I don't I would know. Think so. And he's a, got a mess. And it's ruining his camouflage. It is. You got this snow camouflage. Oh, and a bright red gas bright tank. Bright red gas tank. That's yes. right. He's got a mess kit right there. He's got yep. an antenna for a radio. On the back, he's got this sweet, uh, you know, bedroll. And of course, he's actually got a uh, a phone that he came yeah. with. And believe it or not, he came with an extra bedroll that's made out of like a like yeah, really? foam material. Yeah, I guess it's the the roll for his bed. Wow. I don't know. I, I don't know why he did that. But you know, again, I'm gonna give this shout out to Jason Cooper, my uh, my cousin, because he had snow job as a kid. And uh, it was it 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 was my introduction to GI Joe, and it's it's part of the figure that always yeah. made my love of GI Joe. Now the real quick la outro story is that my aunt Gussie had these. My aunt Gussie was the sweetest human being I've ever known in my life. She had these little uh, figures with skis on them. Yeah. And so I would always, as a kid, go over there and, and ski down to the little Duncan Fife couch. <laughs> 
all the time, and then over and over and over. And I, oh, I've, you had a you had a a, a winter story. Oh well, okay, that's go. true. I'm gonna go ahead and post. Uh, we found. Thank you for reminding me of that. Yeah. You're very, very. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and post a picture. Rob and I talked about this last year. Last year we had a very strange thing happen in Southeast Georgia. We had a snow at Christmas time. It was the craziest thing ever. I ain't never seen that. Yep. It lasted for all of 18 minutes, but it was yep. there. And so while it was there, I took a picture of this snow job in his natural habitat. Yeah, actual snow. You're welcome. South Georgia. That's right. That's right. Yep. So there's that graphic up there for you guys. Snow job is my pick this week for show and tell. It is a good looking figure. I like Even it. For I like it. Even for G.I. Joe. Even for G.I. Joe. Even for G.I. Joe. All right. Okay, that's show and tell. All right. Now, we have shown and told. This is, I'm, I'm really curious about this. Last week, oh. uh, I got to do the Box of Mystery. And so this week, I'm going to turn that over to Rob. So this is a section of our show called... It's time for the Box of Mystery. That's right. That's it. All right, Rob. What's okay. in your box? The figure I bought was... I actually bought this figure. I was at uh, Galactic Comics and Games. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found this... I'd seen this figure on the wall for years. Um, I think it was from somebody's collection they bought. I originally thought it was Ted's. Okay. But I asked, I asked Keith about it, and he said no, it was one from a collection they bought. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy this figure. It was 20 bucks. I probably could have gotten it down for more, but, you know, uh, times are hard, and I b- fully believe in supporting your local comic book shop Absolutely. if you have one. Absolutely. Uh, this box was too, this this figure in its box was too big to put in, in, the, the, in the actual box of mystery. So and we'll then, have a different one. As I was taking, I wanted it to be a surprise, so when I was bringing it over here, I didn't, I forgot to cover it up. So I had an old t-shirt in my truck. So I wrapped the figure in a into t-shirt the, into the, in the t-shirt, and I'll let's see. Let me take what is that? Out. You got something in a pocket? Yeah, I do. What is in a pocket? Last week, Chris said you needed a, to be a collector. You needed a good pair of scissors. Another thing you need is a good pair of snips. Oh, because of the uh, yeah for cutting those little wires. Yeah, that, golly. Thing. Good pair of snips is good. Um, you got to swallow your pride, and you can usually find these in the sewing section at Walmart. I get those. You can also get them at Harbor Freight or at Lowe's. Yeah, probably places like that. Yeah. Okay, so let me take my T-shirt off and reveal. Oh man! Oh man! From the old, I think this is from '98. I looked it up. Oh, goodness. it is. And this, this folks, is what's called not mint in box. No, no. And uh, so you see why I probably could have gotten the price down some, but twenty bucks. You're I wasn't right. going to. Uh, so this is Chewbacca in chain. Dear Lord, which Lord. sounds like either a really bad exploitation explo- exploitation movie or a. <laughs> grunge band or something right, but the good... figure is actually labeled chewbacca in chains yeah chewbacca in chains so we're going to open up this little you're gonna open him up we're all right open him, open him up, up. And have you ever opened he's him? already been opened yeah but uh he is still attached to the board so are you Let's gonna see. unattach him oh yeah that's why you brought the snips yeah he oh, actually snips. came all planned for this one. so this is what in here's here's uh the chewbacca's chain. chains the chain if you remember bosch well, do you say Bosch or Bosch? I say Bosch. Bosch. Bosch was holding him uh, by that when she went to see Jabba. She had him locked up. All right, you're going to snip that bad boy? All right. While I'm snipping, and see, instead of having to untie this, just snip. You just give you a go. couple snips. There you go. It's like Bob Vila all up and in Chris here. And Chris can pick Gen these X up wall. off his floor later. I'm going to have to or step on them one or pack or eat it. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll have to clean it up later. Now, back in the day, did you when you first saw Return of the Jedi, did you know that was Princess Leia? No. I didn't either. Mm-mm. Matter of fact... Not until she took her mask off. Right. And then I bought the... I still thought it was the coolest outfit, so I bought the yeah. toy wanting the yeah. Bosch figure. And I don't think I ever took her mask off because like, no, nah, she's oh, yeah. going to just be Bosch. Yeah. So let's see what we got here. This is a very, very furry... Man, that's like a... That's Chewbacca. like Afro Baca. Yeah. I mean, his hair is... This boom. is more like this is more like what I, you would think Bigfoot would look like. Yeah. Uh, he's actually... Oh, he's Joining? bendy. Is bendy? Yeah. Oh, it's been oh, it's a bendy material like gum. Yeah, he's very soft too. Well, yeah, he's soft. But yeah, he looks like Chewbacca on cocaine or something. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Can you get that? Ch- okay, that did so, not sound like Chewbacca. So, that like I said, good. this was a box of mystery. I mean, like I said, this is this is not a great looking figure. Not a great you know, one. it's not a great looking figure, but there is a charm to this figure. You can almost have it as a stuffed animal. And all. So. Am I going to display this? Yes, I am. I'm going to find a place to put this because, like I said, you know the, you know Chris and I, we've got hot toys and we've got sideshow and we've got all that and figures, but there's still a charm 
to a figure like this to a collector. That's right. And, if and you, I like it. Well, and it, you know, it's got to, uh, this funny little side. So, so you mentioned this. You mentioned the Hot Toys Chewbacca. I've got that figure, and it's 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 perfect. It yeah. looks like a 12 inch version of Chewbacca. And but the funny thing is, when you, when I first opened it, was, his hair kind of came out like this. Yeah. And I thought, oh man, it doesn't look anything like it does. And then, so here I am in my office, <laughs> and I am literally combing his fur, you know, to straighten yeah. it up. And I'm like. Oh God! Is this something about to walk into my door? And he said, <laughs> but what's cool about that is, is it? I think all these figures too, as you have it, that has a special place in your, in your heart. Because yeah. you, you, you have you, and you. I knew this too, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this story last week. Uh, my, uh, my Ashley's best friend Kim, her daughter came in one day and she said, I think I know why you have all this stuff. Every bit of this is a piece of your childhood. And I went. That's a good way of And I had like a tear. Oh, you're right. You get it. <laughs> you get me. You get me. Finally, that's someone right. had. And I walked out and I was like, oh, I exist. Yeah. All right, that's how it was. Validation. All right. So, validation. Like said, so we got a cool little uh, opening thing for a box of mystery. And uh, Keith got some money that comic books, des- comic book shops desperately need right now. You didn't know uh, that when you bought that, it would one day be in the box of mystery. Box of mystery. Well, no, that's I bought right. it this week. Oh, you bought that this week? I bought it specifically for this segment. So you did know. I had gone by Galactic to get some magazine boxes for my dad. Okay. And uh, didn't have any because they had apparently people There's like a shortage. Them. And um, shortage. so I was walking around and I saw that figure. You know what? I've been looking at this figure for years. I'm going to get it. The Box of Mystery. The Box of Mystery. So now this Chewbacca now has a permanent home where he will be treated well. Chewbacca. As he slowly falls over from his mystery. cocaine-induced let Coma. <laughs> yep. Chewbacca of Mystery. Yep. I got I to gotta redeem myself. Yeah. Chewbacca that's in Chains. Somewhat. That should be the title of your next album. Chewbacca in Chains. Chewbacca in Chains. Chewbacca in Chains. Yep. That's a punk band. We don't, we're going to play which Chewbacca is, in which Chains. Is Chewbacca in Chains. It says Chewbacca in Chains, but he only has one chain on him. Well, che- well okay. Chewbacca in Chain. Chewbacca okay. in Chains. They let him keep his bandolier. How do they not know there were weapons in yeah. that bandolier? All kind of stuff he could blow up. I mean, Jabba, his. Because the new movies prove Chewbacca likes blowing stuff up. And, that's true, mm-hmm. and it also proves that Java didn't do a very good job of. Hey, let's check that guy. Yeah, what's it? there? Can't be anything dangerous in that astromech droid that was sent here by a Jedi that moved no. the Death Star. So let's here. make sure to keep them all together as we. <laughs> that's right. Them. That's right. Keep them yes. all together. It's the only safe way. Yep. Ask the Magic Eight Ball. Well, you know what? I got to ask the Magic Eight Ball first last time because I was prepared, okay. but you were more prepared than I was this. Well, I wrote it down. Today, but I, I did have. Something. But you were prepared. Like I said, this um, according to my daughter who does follow podcast, our our debut podcast. She said did okay. Okay. Um, I looked at it right before we started this one. We had 165 views. All right, on not our bad. video, not bad. 11 likes. I That's think like we 10 percent. Yeah, I think we gained uh, 10 subscribers. Okay. Um, and we had a good number of comments, all of which were positive. So my question to the Magic Eight Ball is. I love numbers. I love tracking numbers. So will this episode two have more views than episode one? Please. please. Magic 8 Ball says... You shook it. You shook it. I can't believe you shook the 8 Ball. That's not the way to shake an 8 Ball. Hit you with the Magic 8 Ball. It won't turn around. That's because you shook it. Oh, this does not bode well. That's because you shook it. Will you want me to do it again? (laughs) Okay, let's talk about the 8 Ball The first one was very doubtful. 8 Ball etiquette. 8 Ball etiquette. You don't shake them. All you gotta do is roll them. Just roll it. Okay. Just roll. Now, now, right. now that he knows the etiquette, my right. eight ball does not. Now, Abby, Abby did tell me. She said, "Expect your views for the second video to be a little less." Oh well, Abby doesn't know. And then she said, "But then it'll pick. It'll back pick up." up. How do they know? How do kids know this stuff? I don't know. They All do right. that. Let's All ask right. the Magic Eight Ball again. Magic Eight Ball. Will this second episode of Gen X Vault have more views on YouTube? It will be shorter. than the first episode. I'm just going to turn it over now. Thank you. I don't want to be Thank shaky. you. Okay. Thank you. Signs point to yes. See, that's why you got to roll. So now it's in your hands, internet world. You got to do it. 165 do it. views. That's the number to beat. We, we got to get to at least a whomp and 170 views, and then we can I'll retire. take 166. That's we can retire at that. Yeah. You, know. you buy one more mug. We're yes. going to Bermuda. We're two mugs. That's right. Two yes. mugs. Two mugs. So we can both go. That's yeah. right. All right, so I'm going to ask the uh, the um, magic eight ball question, and my eight ball question is this: Will Boba Fett actually appear in Mandalorian season two? Now, when I say Boba Fett, I don't mean just the actor Tamora Morrison, which we talked about. Yeah. I'm t- because that's been confirmed by the House of Mouse. Mm-hmm. 
What I'm talking about is will Boba Fett appear like he does from, let's say he got out the Sarlacc pit yep. and it is Boba Fett. It is Boba Fett. Not a clone. Nope. So I'm asking if Boba Fett... Well, Boba Fett is a clone. Right, but not the clone <laughs> of Boba Fett. Right. Not like another We one. want the actual man himself that went down Boba the Sarlacc pit Fett. and came back out. Boba Fett. Yep. Will he appear in Attack? Oh, no, excuse me. No, we don't know that. Yeah. Will, we, will he appear in Mandalorian Season 2? All right, so Magic 8-Ball. Will he appear in Mandalorian Season 2? My sources say no. Because yeah. oh. Tamora Morrison, Morrison, he could be playing a random clone. He could be playing Captain Rex. That's right. From the Clone Wars and uh, Rebels. Because as we all know, that uh, Django had cloned himself yep. multiple, multiple times on Kamino. Yes. And Boba Fett was really just a clone of Django. Yep. So... Magic 8-Ball says no. I'm hoping Magic 8-Ball's wrong on that one. We shall see. All right, let's see. But then the Magic 8-Ball could be mad because I shook it. It could be, but we'll we'll ask next week nicely. Thank you guys so much for watching. That was our show this week. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Please subscribe if you have not done so already. And whatever that bell means, I don't even know what that means. I just see it on the interwebs. I I barely go to YouTube. I don't even get get alerts when I do subscribe stuff. So people say click the bell and I don't know what that means. But anyway, click subscribe, and if you like what you want to see here and you want to see more of it, we'd like to see you in the future. We're going to edit these shows and get our get our rhythm down for you guys, and we certainly appreciate you watching. Thank you so much. From Gen X Vault, I'm Chris. I'm Rob. And you're watching the Gen X Vault. <laughs>